Hi everyone and welcome to my new video. So I used my free time to make an, a clone version of the famous uh, device now on the internet, Flipper Zero. So till now I've done Area Futures and I uploaded a video about that. So that device was able to read and recognize uh, RF signals and emulate them. Uh, and also I did Wi-Fi features. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about this device that is still uh, on a proto board, but it works. I'm going to show you some tests. And this device is able to read RF tags that work on 125 kilohertz, which use EM4100 standard that uses Manchester encoding. And this device is also able to emulate those tags. Basically, we can read the tag, uh, save it, uh, on our smartphone and after that we are going to be able to replay it. I'm going to show you how everything works. Firstly, we are going to see a test that I, that I did outside on a door that I have permission to work on. After that, I'm going to show you how everything is connected, uh, which components I used, the pinouts and schematics and everything. And also I'm going to share the, the code that I wrote so you will be able to, to grab the code and put it on the board and you will be able to recreate the same thing as I did here. Before I start, I want to say that if you like electronics and these DIY videos, so please consider subscribing to my channel. It means a lot to me. So thank you for that. So let's get started. So let's firstly see how the device works. We have an Android app on our smartphone and the app should be connected or our smartphone should be connected with the device. That is my uh, Bluetooth uh, module that I have on the board. Uh, so after that, we can go to the menu and go to the 8266 RFID cloner. I can press on the refresh data, not current RFID data. But if I put the RFID tag to the coil, as you can see, the LED blinks, indicating that the RFID tag is red. And now I can refresh the data, and that is the, the RFID tag that our device uh, previously read. Now I can save it. And even if I close the app and, uh, you know, uh, enter into the app again, uh, the same thing is going to be stored into an SQL light uh, database. And now I can replay this tag, which is the same as uh, this verified tag. So let's see how we can recreate the same thing as I did here. So let's see the components that we need in order to recreate the project. Uh, so firstly, we are going to need uh, the microcontroller. I used 8266 microcontroller, which is mounted on this D1 mini board, Wemos D1 mini board, which has uh, FDDI built in, and it is pretty easy to be programmed, and I really like that microcontroller, that board. Uh, this is the reader. The name of it is RDM6300, and it is able to energize the, the tag and read it. This is the Bluetooth module that I used to connect the electronic parts with the app that I showed you previously. Uh, this is the LED that I use uh, to inform the user that an RFID tag is present into the coil. And this coil here is hooked with one of the pins. I'm gonna show you later the, the schematics. And I use it uh, to emulate the signal. It is pretty interesting story. I found a GitHub repo, uh, so the guy did an amazing job. So uh, he wrote a code for the Manchester encoding. So I didn't invent it. I just grabbed the Manchester encoding and I put it and, and combined it with my code. How it actually works. The RFID tag, when it's present uh, near the coil, it energizes. So the coil energizes the, the tag. So the tag actually has a coil inside of it and how ones and zeros are transmitted. So the reader uh, sees and detects when a high current 
uh, consumption is present uh, knows that it means one. And when low current consumption is present, it knows that as zero. The same thing happens here, but the microcontroller toggles one of the pins uh, that are hooked up with this uh, coil and toggles from input to output. So basically when we have output, uh, we have uh, you know connection to the ground, meaning that we have short circuit and meaning that we have a high current consumption. And when the pin is in input mode, we have high impedance, meaning we have open circuit for low current consumption. So I'm going to show you the GitHub repo that I, the, the, the guy uh, explained it very well. So I combined it with my code, as, uh, uh, as I said before, and we are able to read the tag and also save it into our local SQLite uh, database on our phone and after that emulate using this uh, coil. So let's see uh, the connections and I'm going to show you the code. And let's see the connections. So the right pin, this pin here of the RDM6300 goes to the D6 pin of the Wemos D1 mini board. So the pin next to it, to the left, goes to D8 pin of the Wemos D1 mini board. And uh, this pin here goes to ground, that is the ground pin. And the left pin, uh, this pin here, goes to the 5 volt, volts of the, of the Wemos D1 mini board. So these are the powering uh, pins. About the Bluetooth module, the RX pin goes to the TX pin of the Wemos D1 board, and the TX pin goes to the RX pin of the Wemos D1 board. Also, we've got to put uh, a power to uh, the, the board, so it uses 5 volts. And uh, the LED is connected to the pin D5 on, of the Wemos D1 board and the coil is connected to the D1 board. Actually, ground is, uh, is connected to, to the other pin of the coil and also ground is connected to the cathode of the LED. I don't use any resistor here because I'm just blinking the LED and I'm sure that uh, so it is not going, going to be burned because I'm just shortly uh, blinking the LED when the tack is present into the coil. This is the code that I wrote and we've got to use software serial library. So it is already installed when you are uh, going to install the uh, Wemos D1 mini board. I'm not going to talk about the code that I wrote uh, so, most of the code is about sending and receiving data uh, and communicating with the, uh, with the cell phone. Uh, so, that code is mine. So, I copied the Manchester encoder from the GitHub repo uh, that, I, that I'm going to show you now. Uh, so, uh, so, this is the GitHub repo that I found. And the guy did an amazing job. So he explained it how we can emulate signals. So I copied that part from this GitHub repo, the Manchester encoder and the preparation of the data. And I combined it with my code that I previously had. And we have, I think, an amazing uh, you know, combination. So we can save data to our smartphone and after that emulate them using the coil that we have on the board. So after uploading the code uh, to the microcontroller, to the ESP8266, uh, we've got to go to Play Store and search for ESP32 Bluetooth. That is, the, that is the application that I did. And we can install the application. And after that, we can connect uh, our phone through Bluetooth uh, with uh, the, the module that we have on the board. Uh, so that is my 
and my name of the Bluetooth module that um, Bluetooth module that I used. And after that, we can sorry, we can go to uh, the app. And after everything is connected, we can go to the menu and click on this menu 8266 RFID cloner. And if everything is connected, everything will work as it should. So that's everything that I have for this project, uh, guys. So thank you for watching. And we are going to see each other in one of our next videos with similar context as this one. So bye bye.